top lane is certainly going to be something that a lot of us are wondering about and, and how TSM are going to handle it. So let's talk some TSM. <laughs> Yeah, so we already know that, you know, top lane is pretty important, especially for this franchise. When you go back and you're looking at all the different things that TSM, uh, all the different players, I should say, that TSM have had that are pretty prominent, uh, you know, from from Dyrus all the way now to Hooney and, and Soul and Solo, right? Like, they play a pretty major part on our team. They're not just something that you forget about. And so it, it really is important for us to kind of discuss what are our options potentially. I got five of them for you here. So we start with the question of the day. Okay, who's been your favorite TSM top laner ever? For me, this is such a hard question. Uh, but again, I got to go with my guy, Dyrus. Um, seeing him at the LCS finals in Chicago and getting all teary uh, because of the warm reception that he received was so big. Uh, it gave me goosebumps, honestly. I, I was almost a little teary myself because... Uh, he's the reason that I, I'm here today uh, talking to you guys about it. So he's, he's easily been my favorite TSM top laner, but I don't know that I have one that I don't like. <laughs> so this is a tough question, but I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section. Now, let's talk real quickly about who do we want in a top laner, okay? Um, now, I obviously am the one that's speaking on what we want currently <laughs> so <laughs> these are uh, obviously going to be things that i'm thinking about but for me there are a couple things and and the first part is weak side you must be able to play tanks like tsm have the ability sure to play through their top laners but the most successful ones that we've had right specifically i think hanser and, and broken blade dyrus in his prime um you know they were and even huni when he was just really going off i think last year their ability to play the weak side and have, you know, that team fight impact later on in the game was really what was something that stood out to me um, and, and a style that I like. I think a lot of good top laners are able to play this weak side uh, and able to be a tanky form of engage or just a, you know, a, a meat shield at times. Um, and there is something that's really important about that. So, yeah, I'm very much of the opinion that this needs to be, I think, one of the most important aspects of, um, you know, of what we what we would want in a in a in a new top laner. Uh, the other thing is the ability to recover from being put behind. This is one of the things that I've loved about Impact specifically the most throughout his entire career. And yes, he has flaws. We saw them, I think, uh, pretty spotlighted, uh, you know, show, shining through, unfortunately, during Worlds, but. The one thing I saw, especially in the LCS about Impact, was when he was put behind, it, it didn't matter. You know, he'd have those games where he'd go 04, 05 even, uh, and he's just, you know, 50 CS behind, all this other stuff. But he was still able to have an impact in the game. No pun intended, truly. And it's, I think it's just a trait that you really want in, in, a, in, a, in a top laner. And I think that there are options out there people who are able to do that uh because this kind of goes along with the weak side part of it right you're gonna get attacked when tsm are focusing in the mid or the bot lane or even the jungle on occasion right depending on who that ends up being so for me there's th having that ability and being able to check that box um while not the most important was something that i thought yeah we should definitely talk about this um, the next part was having two to three pocket picks that can carry when needed. And what I mean by that is, you know, one of the things I loved about Huni specifically, right, is he could bring out the rumble, the gangplank, uh, the Jace I always thought was really strong for him, right? And his ability to have these pocket picks that he could pull out when, when the team really needed him to be more of a carry oriented top laner. Um, he learned the weak side style, I think, with us, and, and it's what made him in his last two years with TSM, in my opinion, a much better version of himself than we had seen in a couple of the last years prior. Obviously, he had much higher highs than he did with us, but as he was getting a little bit older, as he was clearly getting a little bit slower due to his wrist injuries and everything, it was pretty clear to me, at least, that he needed... Um, 
you know, he, he needed to be able to play weak side. He learned that. But he still had this ability to win TSM. We're like, hey, we have a better option than just trying and hoping that our bot lane can carry or that we can scale, right? We can play through Hooney, and that will mess with people, right? Especially in best of ones and, and occasionally in series too. So I think, you know, having those pocket picks, and we've got some people, especially on this list, that can do that. I think that that would be really good for us. A couple more things here. Still being able to grow, meaning that I personally prefer a player who is not already at their apex. It's not already at the top level uh, of their abilities because that's just going to be really important moving forward for us uh, because this team is probably going to need time to grow, right? I don't think TSM is going to build a team, at least we'll see. I doubt, though, that they're going to build a team with the expectation of, hey, we are going to, you know, be contending for an LCS championship right away. I think they're going to be trying to build a team that's like, hey, we're shooting to get to Worlds. If we're the three seed, doesn't matter, but we want players that we can invest into that are going to grow and get better. And I think, you know, we saw this with um, Evil Geniuses. I think a lot of people are going to be copying. I think a lot of people, a lot of LCS teams specifically are going to be copying that where they have young LCS players mixed with some veterans that are able to kind of push the team to the next level um, and that can grow together. And then, you know, I, I think Golden Guardians actually put this perfectly. Th that's what their system is going to be. It's going to be, you know, find out who they can believe in, you know, plug in younger players uh, to fill some of those spots and then go uh, and start growing together from there. I think we're going to start to see a lot more stability in the LCS, hopefully, uh, with this. And I think, you know, not being uh, at your prime right now is is actually a better thing for TSM, uh, especially if they're the player that they're picking up, if their prime can be passed uh, that. And I think, T uh, I think there are options for that in the top lane. Lastly, it's entertainment, okay? Almost every one of our top laners has been entertaining in some way or another. With Dyrus being a bit of a grump sometimes, um, Hanser, you know, having his own style, his own uh, ability to mesh with his teammates, Broken Blade really being entertaining, Huni being really entertaining, uh, Soul being really entertaining as well, and then even Solo, uh, I think having a bit of uh, that chip on his shoulder made him very interesting to watch. So hopefully if TSM Legends continues in the way that we uh, hope that it will. Uh, having uh, players that are entertaining definitely is going to help. I think top lane is a great spot to have that. Here's my first option. It is solo, right? Uh, the the 29-year-old, the soon-to-be 30-year-old top laner. Again, in a position where I think you can kind of afford to be a little less skilled necessarily, especially in the LCS. But um, listen, solo, he's not my first choice. But I do think that I was very wrong in terms of what he brought which was stability. And that was his ability to be a weak side top laner, I, I really think is still very good. I, 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 I don't really know that there's a lot of people who can just accept that they're just going to be weak side like he does and still play for the team. And I think this was something that he had to learn. I don't think he initially had that or even recently up until the last couple of years really had that mindset. But it's clear he wants to play. I think, you know, he's been all over the TSM merch. And I think that they just like his maturity now and his, I think, just his strengths that he brings to the team, which is just being there. I mean, seriously, it, it, you, when you have the foundation, the solid foundation um, that's that Solo has where he's not going to take unnecessary risks, which can be good and bad. Like, you're not going to get the major highlight place for him, but you're rarely ever going to see him down 20 CS in lane and, you know, being able, unable to, to do anything. Now, again, if a, if a carry top meta comes around, I think he will struggle in that, but even if not, like he's still able to have impacts at all time. Like, you know, going back to my checklists, I think he hits a lot of the things that we're looking for. The biggest problem is, is, is his age for me. Okay. Um, with a team that, again, I think is trying to build up, trying to get better with time i just don't know that he fits that um i wouldn't be upset with with them re-signing him as his contract is up um i i would love to see him a part of tsm in some way shape or form um again maybe even being kind of that bridge guy for a younger player to come up um and him understanding that that's his role i think he plays that pretty well so that's our first option
Second option is Soul. Obviously, we already have him on our um, uh, under contract. He is. It was very clear that TSM believed in him, and they made it pretty obvious that they felt like he's their future. I think he might be the most likely option out of all the ones that I'm going to give to you today. This isn't to say that they maybe fall out of favor. You know, he falls out of favor with them. You know, especially with. The fact that I, I didn't know this, somebody pointed this out to me, but Glenn is the assistant GM still. He is not technically the general manager. So there is still a position open for a general manager, which I think TSM are probably looking into. Whether that'll be Glenn or somebody else, I don't know. But if Glenn is still going to be staying with the team, then it's pretty clear to me that he is committed to um, to Seoul. And you know, with the likely rumors of Chawi being gone as well, I, I believe that you know, things could change still, but I think that they do really like Soul. I think Dominic and the, you know, the upper level people really like him. He's super unbelievably entertaining. He definitely has that, that carry potential that we were talking about. I think his biggest weaknesses are, you know, being able to play the lane uh, in, in a losing in a losing fashion and being able to kind of come back from it. And I think kind of his tanking is not great. I think he's used to being a carry. So I think Learning how to play weak side a little bit better while still having those carry picks could be great. And especially if we if we anticipate a carry meta here in the future, he would be like perfect for that. So um, we'll have to see about this one. But I do think that my personal opinions are um, that, that that this is this this is likely going to be our guy going into 2023. But there's still some more interesting options as well. Not more interesting, but can you know other numbers of people that are interesting and one of them is tenacity listen this guy is the youngest person on this list he's just turned 19 i think well last year he turned 19 he'll turn 20 uh before the the season starts but he's been one of the top prospects him and soul uh he and soul excuse me have been easily some of the top top lane prospects for the last couple of years and if tsm were to go with either of them i wouldn't really care i do think that while Soul has the ability, I think, to be a lot more um, of, of a carry and a lot, uh, I think his ceiling might be higher for Soul. I do believe that Tenacity's floor is extremely high. I think he's going to come in ready to roll. I think his potential is still extremely high to the point where it wouldn't surprise me if in the next couple of years, you know, Tenacity is one of the best top laners in the LCS. Uh, if you've watched his games, this guy can play just about anything. His weak side game is really strong. I do think that he also lacks, and I think this is more just for younger people, but being able to uh, recognize when you're down and how to kind of mitigate, mitigate those losses. Um, but I really, really like him, and I think if TSM were to grab him, because I think he, I think he's coming to the LCS no matter what. Somebody's either going to buy him out or Hunter Thieves are going to bring him up. And if that happens, then good for Hunter Thieves. But if he is available and TSM aren't 100% sold on Soul, I think you should try to go after him. He is he is potentially a cornerstone piece moving forward for whatever team has him. Um, I, I would actually kind of bet that he will be one of those people. He's had plenty of time to to marinate, to mature, uh, to really figure out his style of game a little bit more. And I just really think he's pretty talented. So if I'm being honest, this is probably my second pick on this list. But we still got two more. Next one's Bradley. I've had the opportunity to interview Bradley. It never went up because the audio got corrupted. Ugh, big sad, by the way, because it was a great interview. But he won, you know, laner of the whatever at um, – last year for god what's it called uh for scouting grounds okay he was awesome and he was a mid laner <laughs> he was a freaking mid laner and he did this and then he goes to the top lane and helps tl become one of the best teams uh, like academy teams out there he's just turned 21 i think he is really really talented um he didn't have like the best year necessarily but considering he roll swapped was learning new you know new nuances about the top lane but has this ability to play so many champions like he realistically of all these players on this list might have the biggest champion ocean of all of them just because of the fact that he's played both solo lanes before so he's going to be able to play things that maybe other people wouldn't expect uh in the top lane if you wanted to get really creative and i really like that about him 
Uh, he's probably my third favorite option. As you guys can normally tell, I like the younger options, especially when a team is kind of rebuilding like I think we should be. And there are rumors that, you know, the whole of TL Academy are going to get picked up by somebody somewhere for some positions. I think even our Mayo might be, a, a, you know, somebody who gets picked up as kind of like a stopgap position uh, jungler. Um, th- this guy, Bradley, deserves a chance. I don't know who's going to give it to him. I, there's not necessarily a ton of open positions at the LCS level right now, but um, for teams that are rebuilding, I think he would be great, and I wouldn't even be upset with how weak the mid lane has been if some team decided to sign him as their like mid laner in academy to get him you know like, caught up again like in a split and then moved him back i mean he he was dominant in scouting grounds against some pretty good talent so uh and he was still able to lane swap and be as good as he is uh and he's got a great mentality about it as well really like bradley i think he'd be a great pickup uh but let's head to the last one here someday now i talked about this Someday's contract is up, uh, and I think, you know, Hunter Thieves are going to decide, I think, between Someday and Tenacity. I would imagine they'll probably go with Tenacity, which would mean that Someday is available. Um, I like Solo a lot, but I think if you're going to go that route, I think you should just sign Someday instead. I don't know if you'll want to stay with all the changes that are coming, but it seems like he's pretty committed to being here. Uh, I believe he's available. He's able to get his green card soon, I would think, which would make him uh, a resident here relatively soon. If he's not already one, I'd have to check. I'm, he might already be one, honestly. Sorry, I'm kind of just thinking about this now. I probably should have checked it, but he might technically be a resident. You know what? Here, let me bring it up real quick. I might be able to uh, to do this real quick just because we got, got a quick second. Um, he is... Yeah, he is North American residency as well. So he doesn't take away from that ability to sign somebody else. He is 26. He'll turn 27 during the season next year. But again, I think top lane, similar to support, is one where maybe you can be a little bit less of that. And I think a lot of people just really disrespect someday. I think he's been arguably the best top laner the LCS has had for the last maybe four or five years. So basically half of the LCS's, uh, you know, time in existence in the, in the, at least the way that we know it right now. Um, I really think he is extremely solid. I think if TSM want to go young, almost everywhere else, and some days probably willing to play like another two or three years and can kind of be that stable guy. I mean, his weak side's amazing. I don't know how entertaining he is necessarily. Um, we've done an interview with him. He was super nice during it. Um, but I, I do believe that, that if, if you're going to go the solo route where you want an older, more um, stop gappy slash, I don't know, just solid top laner, I think this is it. So I, I think someday would be better. He might be a little bit more expensive, but uh, he should be on the top of most people's top lane lists. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. But uh, what do you guys think of these different options? Is there somebody who I'm missing out who you guys think we should be looking at? Let me know. Uh, also, we're going to have you know, more videos kind of surrounding me on, on, on either side, either below or above me. I still haven't put that in yet, obviously, but, um, you know, make sure you check out Monday's episode and know that, uh, on this coming Friday, you will have yet another episode. So, uh, I appreciate you guys and, uh, yeah, stay good and I'll catch you on the next one.